you got to follow. Some of us are saying, God, I'm comfortable where I'm at in my Christian walk. I'm good. And the Lord's saying, but I'm not going to be there much longer. you got to come with me. I'm not going to be in that place that you were a year ago. When I talked about measuring out your Christian life, I don't know if it's a great measuring stick, but I want to tell you right now, me and my wife always talking about this. Were we even Christians then? Because I can't go back there because that's not where he's at anymore. He's taken me to a different place and a new level. And if I try to go back to where I was, he will, I, I'm sorry, he won't be leaving me. I will be leaving him. You see, to grow, you got to find out whether or not you're following him or you're asking him to follow you. The fruit is not for those who have good deeds. The fruit is for those who say, I will go where you go. Now, we read that first scripture about abiding. He says the stick and the branch. He says, if it's not bearing fruit, I cut it off. <laughs> then I read, man, if you want fruit, you got to abide. And it says those who are led, those who follow the Spirit of God, now, I'm going to say this just to kind of simplify it real easy for you. You know what it means to be led by the Spirit of God? It means to go against your flesh. It's contrary. Go against your flesh. This is going to set us up for part three of how you grow. But if you want your walk with the Lord to bear fruit, you got to go against your flesh, y'all. That means fight. How many of you guys are comfortable? Anyone in here? Come? I love my life, y'all. I was thinking the other day, me and Susie, we're in our nice, warm house. Okay, it's not warm. Every night, I don't know what she's doing with the AC unit, but it is freezing at night. But, man, I'm sitting in that nice, comfortable house, and I went out to the garage, and, and I was at Brayton's house, and we're out in the garage, and we're filling gaps and stuff with some foam. And we're sitting there, and it was freezing. I was thinking to myself, man, people live in this kind of condition, you know, all the time. I'm thinking about how comfortable I am, and I will be honest, it's hard to get up and move. It's hard to get up and go into a different situation. Is anyone else, anyone else in here dislike change? Anyone else in here? I mean, I like some change, but I'm talking about big change, all right? I was just telling my dad, you know, my family all lives in Woodstock, and we're a tight family. And me and Susie, we're rebels. We moved to Conyers. Does you guys know where Conyers at? I didn't know where Conyers was at until I moved out there. I didn't even know it existed. I'm out in Conyers. And I told my dad, every time they go out and they're doing stuff, dad went and picked up Hannah and Dilly. Welcome back, Hannah and Dilly from Kenya. I'm so glad you guys are home. Yeah. <laughs> We love each other. Look at us applaud and everything we do. I love it. I was telling my dad. He was on the way. I said, man, when I hear about the things you guys are doing up there, I want to move up there. But can I tell you what's keeping me from moving up there? Moving. That's it. I don't want to move. You guys ever moved? Have you ever moved a friend? It's even worse because you don't get the pleasure of staying there. You know what I'm saying? You get, you get a slice of pizza. That's all you get. You know, it sucks. Yeah. No, I ain't moving, man. You know why moving sucks? Because it's uncomfortable and it's work. And so many of us in our Christian walk are telling the Lord, but God, I don't want to keep growing. I don't want to go to the next stage. Some of us have been in our Christian walk. I've been a Christian almost my entire life, and I keep saying to the Lord, but can't we just stop? I'm there. I've done enough. I got all these great lessons. And I got all these things. I don't want to grow anymore. And the Lord's looking at me going, if you don't grow, you die. If you don't grow, you die. You don't start walking forward, I leave you behind. If I get up and I start moving into the desert and you don't follow me, you're alone in the desert. Here's the truth. What worked for you in your Christian walk yesterday won't work today if you're following him. Amen? In order to grow, you got to follow. you got to be led by him. I want to say something. Psalm 23, just so you know, if you're tired of growing, he will lead you to green pastures, and still waters. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're weary and tired, you follow him and he'll lead you to rest. You hear me? He'll lead you to rest. Do not think for a second that following the Lord is all beaten up and dead and you never stop and you start, die of starvation in the desert. He says, I will take you to the still waters. I will put you on those green pastures. Yes, I will take you through the shadow of darkness. I will take you where the place of evil, but I'm going to give you rest. Too many of us are fighting God saying, I want my own rest. I need time off. I need me time. The Lord said, if you follow me, I'll take you to true rest. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. Thanks, Bernita. You got me pumped. If you're online right now and you can't hear her, I want you to know she's the only reason I get excited when I'm preaching. She's not the only reason. Dad, you too. Every time you say amen, I get pumped. Last thing, if you want to grow, look to your neighbor. I got to say, look to your neighbor and say, you got to grow. Look to your other neighbor if you got one and say, you need to abide. Tell your other neighbor again, and you, point at him, say, and you, point at him. Do it, point at him, get, make him feel it. 
So you got to be led. You got to follow. I see you two. They even look at each other. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Dan. All right, here we go. Number three, if you want to grow, you got to be disciplined. This sucks. I'm going to tell you right now, this sucks. I hate this one. How many of you guys have decided to work out and quit already this year? Anyone in here? I have. Yeah, I did already. It sucks. This one's tough. How many of you guys said, I'm going to do something every day, and you start doing it every day, and then all of a sudden, one day, you can't do it? Anyone in here? Too busy, got other things to do. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. Being disciplined. I'm going to read you a quick scripture. This is my last scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I got three verses. Paul, talking about you and I in this Christian walk. He says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run? <laughs> so dumb and simple. But you need to hear it again. Do you not know that those who run in a race, they all run. Every single one of them make the effort. But only one receives the prize. Is anyone in here like running? No, I hate running. Okay, you two, I know. I was part of the running group, and you two are psychopaths, okay? You guys are talking while we're running. Like, what are you, wackos? <laughs> I'm doing everything inside of me to control my temper because I'm getting mad every time I take another step. <clears throat> Could you imagine running and doing all the hard work, running a marathon and getting to the end, and there's no prize? Not even a pat on the back, you did it. <laughs> Wouldn't you guys be bummed out? I mean, if I'm going to run, there better be ice cream or something at the end. You know what I'm saying? There better be some reward. He says, this man, in every race, they all run, but only one receives the prize. This is his encouragement. Run in such a way to obtain it. He says, when you walk out this Christian life, imagine it's like the big race, the big marathon. Only one person is getting the prize. He says, run your Christian life as if you have to get that prize. Could you imagine for a second? I want you to look around at everyone in here. I want you to find the most Christian person you could find. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm here too. All right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I see you guys. Thank you. Look at them. Imagine only one of you are going to get the reward of heaven. He says, run in such a way that you're like competing. He, he, he doesn't want you to actually compete with one. You know, you don't, don't go trip someone up in their Christian walk, you know. Like, I'm going to make it. You know, don't do that. But he says, run in such a way as if only one of you are going to obtain the prize. I'll be honest with you. My discipline, I'm doing a little jog. People pass me up. I'm like, yeah, go get it, buddy. And if there was only one prize, I think 90% of us would probably give up, disqualify ourselves. Nah, I'm not ready for that race. That race is too tough to run that way. Paul says, man, I want you to run in such a way. Then he says this, verse 25. He says, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. That means well-trained. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. This is talking about the Olympics. Talking about a crown of all leaves, right? He says, but we, we do it for an imperishable crown. In other words, don't do it for what the world has. This reward is so much greater. He's like, man, run even harder. And then he says in verse 26, therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body. And I bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. That's a hard word. I'm going to beat my flesh because I'm afraid I'm going to get disqualified from this race into heaven. <sighs> When's the last time you thought that way? I think the majority of us don't think that way. We think, oh, I'm grown enough in my discipline. And we set camp and we say, God, I don't, I'm not ready to move forward. I'm good right here. And Paul's saying, man, you got to run in such a way that you beat your flesh as if there's only one prize. Because listen, here's a quick little warning for you. In chapter 9 of Corinthians, by the way, he gives that warning that they all walked under the same spirit. And they had Jesus the rock who gave out water. And they missed it. And it was a warning to us. Don't get disqualified because you get lazy. Don't get disqualified because you get lazy in your walk. Because other things get more important. Well, I've been a Christian for a long time, and I've been through it a few times, and I just don't need to go back through that. And the Lord's looking at you going, no, no, you beat your body. Could you imagine running the race? I'm 34 years old. 34 years of running the race and disqualifying myself in the end.
because I got lazy. I need to encourage you. You need to be running the race hard. Can I say this? I love this. Have you guys ever seen those fail army videos? <laughs> you see those guys who celebrate too early. You guys ever seen that? Man, I've seen so many of these with races, man. One of them was bad. I don't just tell you, this isn't part of my sermon, but I'll just tell you the story anyways. Go YouTube it. Guy's riding a bike. He's getting excited. He's about to win. Puts his hands out. <laughs> He's about to cross the finish line. He wrecks. I know. It's the saddest thing in the world because the guy behind him put all his effort to get ahead. And when you're watching the video, you can see him. He can't see him because he's just focused on the goal. But the guy behind him is down low, pedaling as hard as he can. And this guy sits up, taking the win before he wins. In the last moment, he disqualified himself from first place. Another story, and this one is a killer one. The guy's running. He's excited. He starts taking the break at the end. This is for everyone here who's been in faith for a long time. Be aware. This guy's running. He's coming to an end, and he puts his hands up. He doesn't trip or fall. The guy behind him wasn't going to lose. He put all of his might in the end and passed him, taking the win, taking the victory. The guy thought it was going to be an easy, breezy win. He did all that hard work in the beginning, did all the hard work in the middle, and at the end, he was trying to celebrate early. Listen, you're still alive. You got more to go. You got to push even harder. Don't let your end be robbed by someone who's more after you than you're after the prize. I'm going to tell you right now, there's someone after you who's more after you than you are after the prize. His name is the enemy, Satan himself. And he's a lion that kills, steals, and destroys, and he has his target on you. And if you get lazy with it and you start getting relaxed, he will take you out. He's not someone who's to be messed with. If you're not growing, you're not abiding, you're not following him, and you're not putting yourself in subjection, you're falling behind.